I don't know, after hearing him calm and talking about the tether story, it's probable. Let's go down to the county attorney's office. I think you'll find a lot of humans down there. All right. No disrespect. Stop driving. I'm flirting with the judge in front of my dad. What's going on? This is Colin. How's everyone doing? Third video of the day. Not gonna lie, a little tired. Wasn't my best decision to put out three videos today, but I scheduled it, so let's rock it. Let's rock it. Act like we've been here before, right? All right, let's do it. I've got a couple hard ones. These are from last week. This is last weekend's. This was WAP. The WAP covered the first appearances, and then Judge McConico covered the bond redetermination hearings. Both cases are from... They're all allegations, but the crimes are pretty heinous. So I'm not going to put my two cents in it because I don't know. But just hearing from what they're charged with, yeah, they're bad crimes. They're bad crimes. All right. Before I hit the play button, you already know. Like and subscribe. Do your backflip, jump kick, backflips, backflip, jump kicks, whatever order you want to do them in. And if you want to donate, links down and below. My link tree has all my cash app, PayPal, whatever. Has all that stuff in it. I would appreciate it. No pressure, though. All right. Let's go. GPS house of missiles. Both tethers are just... Oh, mm, both. Does he have a... He's going to go in front of a judge or a magistrate, right? He's going in front of McConnell. Okay. McConnell will look at it. Uh, sir, what's your name? Full name? Sorry, to sign Gatson. Uh, Mr. Gatson. Sir, good afternoon. I'm Magistrate H. F. Bay here at a criminal matter. Case number is 2305952101, sir. You do have an attorney. Go ahead, counsel. Your Honor, Austin Gregory, <laughs> PA5193, on behalf of Mr. Gatson, who's present by Zoom, has been made aware of his constitutional rights, waste, and re stand for you. Thank you. I'm going to enter a plea of not guilty. Court dates are October 31st, 2023, probable cause conference, followed by preliminary examination, November 7th, 2023. Both matters are in front of Judge King. Mr. Gasson, while this case is pending, okay, there are some bond conditions, sir. One is you are not to have any contact with the complainant, who is Shalanda Sims, but any witnesses in this case. Do you understand that? Yeah. That means no person to person contact, no contact to third parties, no phone calls, no emails, no text messaging. Also, sir, you are not to possess any firearms or any other dangerous weapons. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. Also, sir, you're not to go to the location of 12674 Riyadh City, Detroit. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, ma'am. With that being said, uh, I have a prior conviction of a third degree fleeing, uh, no KBS history, uh, local ties. Some of the charges are assaultive. Council Vincent, go ahead, Esteban. Thanks, Judge. We're going to be asking for 100000 cash if the defendant were to post. We're going to be asking for tether and house arrest. That fleeing conviction that Your Honor mentioned out of 22, um, it ended up leading to probation. So at the time of this offense, he was on probation for that. Ironically, in, in that case, Judge, it ended up starting as an FA as well as an RNO. It ended up getting pled down to the fleeing. Um, Your Honor, he also uh, had a GBH, his uh, GBH dismissed out of Roseville because the uh, complaining witness failed to appear. That was in May of 22. And then, Judge, we have these allegations, which are just flat out scary, um, doing what he did, the assault, chasing people down. And then all the while, he's he's being charged with a carjacking. He's not even lawfully on the roadway because he still has an ongoing DWLS out of 36 district court because he doesn't have a valid license. But yet he's carjacking people. Um He's invading people's homes. He's robbing people. He's assaulting people. And then his mode of 
you know, or is a car and he can't even, shouldn't even be in a car. So I think a hundred thousand is lenient judge, but I'll stick to that a hundred thousand cash tether house arrest. Thank you. You know what, Deb? I've been looking for that hoodie for weeks. I and I can't find it. Now that the weather's getting cold, I, I can only find three of my hoodies. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. He did take my hoodie. Also, uh, I don't remember who said it, but someone said Attorney Gregory is always underdressed. This is weekend court. They don't. I, I still wouldn't come up as a lawyer dressed like that. I wouldn't do it personally. They all do. Attorney Vincent looks like he's wearing just like a pullover. It's pretty casual for attorneys on weekends. So I'm not going to fault him on that. A hoodie might be pushing a little bit, but I'm not going to lie. I would totally show up in a hoodie if I could. And yeah, I mean, look how good a hoodie looks. Red hoodies look good on people with dark hair, right? All right. Now we heard the first half. Now we'll keep going. Council Vince, uh, Council Gregory, go ahead, Esteban, please. Your Honor, Mr. Gatson has multiple ties to the community. He has two children. He's 31 years old. Uh, his previous conviction is non-assaultive. Uh, the, the allegations here, Your Honor, my client uh, would need a one-time police escort if, if, if fine is made because he has things that uh, he would need to retrieve from that location, Your Honor. He, uh, so he, he understands no contact order. He is employed, Your Honor. We would ask for a personal bond uh, as the court believed it necessary, a, a GPS tether with monitorization. Council Gregory, does he reside at the Riyadh address? Uh, he does, Your Honor. He does have an alternative. Because I, I see that his address is listed as Bringard. I uh, understand that, Your Honor, but he was living at the location. Okay. My Bringard address is her mother house. No, you don't. You don't need to. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Mr. Gaston, you're going to have one time opportunity uh, to go with a police escort. That means police, not a friend, not a mother, police escort to get belongings. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. But just looking at the charges in this particular matter, I do believe that Mr. Gaston is that uh, he is a danger. And with that, okay. And then he's chasing a vehicle. I believe that that had a witness in it. The complaint had swollen eyes, multiple scratches, blood on her face and neck. Allegedly from where she was being strangled or choked by the defendant. These are all allegations. I do believe that the cash bond, $100,000 cash, no surety, no 10% is warranted because I believe that he is a danger. He makes bond, GPS tether, house arrest. I believe, Council Gregory, that is unaffordable. Is that correct? That, that's unaffordable. That means that he gets to go. I'll have another court date in front of Judge McConnico on October 24th, 2023, Tuesday, 9 o'clock. Judge McConnico will look at the bond amount and bond conditions. Thank you, Judge. Anything else? Nothing, nothing further, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gaston. You can step aside. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not, I think so. All right, the way I have this set up now, that first hearing was from WAP um, last weekend, and then the follow up clip with Judge McConica was Monday or Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday. I think they said October 24th. That's the day I got the second clip. But then the second guy is the same way. It's the first clip was from the weekend, and then it's the follow up. So we're, I'm just doing the very the same defendant we just saw in his in his follow up with Judge McConnico, 
And then we're going to go back, back in time to do another guy that was at WAP and then his follow up with Judge Mercanico. I hope that makes sense. Also, I do want to apologize for the sound system at WAP. Every time they go to the DDC, there is that awful feedback. I never realize it till I have my headphones plugged into my microphone because I can hear it really sharply. But when I'm watching it with just my normal computer, I don't really hear it that much and it doesn't bother me. But I can hear it pretty loud. So, but it's not me. It's it's their sound system. All right. Let's see what Judge McConaughey has to say about this guy. Robbery, unarmed, count four, assault with intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder, or by strangulation. Count five, domestic violence, defendant is labeled as a vigil offender, second offense notice. Today is the date time for a bond redetermination hearing. Judge, good morning. Steve Vincent for the People, he's 71917. Judge, may it please the court, Philip Reagan on behalf of Mr. Gaston, Your Honor. State your name, Mr. Gaston. For sure, Mr. Gaston. Argument. Judge, my client is 31 years of age. He has a prior judge. It looks like he has a prior um, case, a plea case from 2022, Judge, looks like he has. He's employed at Magnus Seating uh, in Highland Park. He has two children that he does take care of. Um, you know, Judge, this is a situation where the complaint and the defendant were living together. Now, I, I, I've, I've been doing this a while. Of course, been doing this a while, Judge. We look at home invasion, carjacking, unarmed robbery, and domestic violence. This is really a domestic situation, Judge between two people. It's no home invasion. It's no project. It, that's that's something that he's charged with. But I, I, I am confident, Judge, that, that at an examination, probably those charges will go away. But regardless, they're here today. We have to deal with them right now. Right. Was there an alleged assault? Absolutely. According to the investigative report. Now, again, 100,000 cash, I think is excessive, Judge. One of the counts is a misdemeanor DV count. You know, my client can go stay elsewhere, doesn't have to stay with the complainant. I'm asking the court for reduction, Judge, uh, to a-, a Mr. Re a Mr. Reagan, I, yes. and, and cause all of these these cases today are a little bit- uh, A little rough. They're a little interesting. Was, was this the case yeah. where the defendant was, was, was in like a high-speed chase with someone or was that another case I'm confused with? Uh, what are you saying? Go ahead, brother counsel. What what you were you saying? Kind kinda. There was a witness that ended up coming and that witness was in a vehicle and this defendant pops in the complainant's vehicle and starts chasing that witness. I don't know if I can go so far as to say high speed, but okay, he was right, chased, okay. allegedly chased. Okay. Yeah. But, and, and and the de and, but the defendant was allegedly driving the the victim's car though, right? Well yeah. her their their car it's in her name their car, I mean, their their car. car. It's her their name car. he okay. he drives a car he's driven it before it's not you know that's why when we say carjack and i'm like they live together i mean it's right. you know but, you know, but but if but if you allegedly you know beat someone that would probably wouldn't be the time where it's no. you know you would no, be able well, to take the car because you know because you have other times to run to the store but you know factors change it's, it's, it's not you know running to a gas station and just pulling somebody out of their car you know, it's a little different, a little different. I, I, I would agree, Judge, based on, on what you just said, Judge. Now, now I'm, I, you know, there are other things, Judge, that we have to look at. Um, you know, we talk about unarmed robbery. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. But domestic violence, Judge, I think that there may be something here. May he do some probation? May he do some batterers counseling? Pro probably, maybe, if he's convicted. But right now, he's innocent, Judge. We don't know what's going to happen. Emotions were at a high level. Things got out of hand. Now, saying all that, Judge, they need to separate. He needs to go where he needs to go. She needs to stay where she needs to stay. Mm -hmm. And I think that he he's working, Judge. He's got a good job. He's not out here, you know, working under the table, doing it. He's got a good job, Judge, that he gets a paycheck for. He takes care of his kids. That's the one reason I'm asking the court to consider a reduction so he doesn't lose it. And it has to start all over from ground zero, Judge. I think no contact would suffice in this case. Mm. Mr. Prosecutor. Judge, I just want to clear something up because I know it was talked about between you and defense counsel. Reason why this is a carjacking, 
I know Mr. Reagan says it was their car and the defendant drives it. You know how long this defendant hasn't had a license for? He's, he has a DWLS that he's failed to appear on multiple times. This is the gal's car. And I mean, if Mr. Reagan, I'm sure he probably didn't know about that, saying that he's driving the car without the license. You know, I mean, neither here nor there, but he's unlawfully on the roadway. Now, that um, conviction in 22, Judge, um, that actually started as an F.A. R&O as well as a fleeing, pled down to a fleeing at 22. He was on active probation at the time of this alleged offense. So he's got that conviction for the fleeing. That was out of um, judge. that was out of um, gosh, I don't even have it. I want to say it was McComb. He had a May 22 GBH that was dismissed because the complaining witness failed to appear. So and then I know we touched on it just briefly. I mean, swollen eyes. Uh, bloody eyes, uh, blood on the face and the neck when the police end up coming. And then we have this chase of the witness who was just trying to intervene. And this defendant's kind of imposing his will, getting in her car and trying to chase him down. So, um, Judge, I'm just here to put everything on the table uh, just to make this an uh, even weighted argument. So I did that. Um, it's a cash bond. I would just ask you to continue some type of cash bond. Judge, and Mr. Ray, Mr. Ray, Mr. Ray, before you make your argument, yes, um, Judge. You know, again, you know, you've you've heard me make this argument before. If he's on probation, if he's on probation. How do we get to the point of purses? uh open all the contents thrown on the floor six hundred dollars allegedly missing fights then a witness is trying to break it up and you're gonna you're gonna chase down the witness for trying to break up the fight and and, and you drive in a car you don't have a license uh you know the, the working in highland park is a great thing you know i, I yeah. know what that is. that's 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 on your way to the middle class that that, that that's good stuff that is how you take care of your kids but when you're Absolutely. when you're on when you're on, but when you're on when you're on probation, you kind of need to avoid the fights and the and the and the and the you gonna you gonna not have somebody have somebody intervene in the fight. So you gonna you gonna what's gonna happen when, what's gonna happen when you when if you get the guy out the car? Well, what's the <laughs> problem with someone? What's the getting in the car in the first place if you don't have a license? How do you do all of this and you're on active probation? That that's where uh, how could any of this even be alleged? Not not that it's done. Be alleged. That's that's my issue. But Mr. Mr. Reagan, go ahead. Yeah, that 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 is an outstanding question, um, an outstanding analysis that you uh, present. And my answer to that, Judge, is simply emotion. It's emotion, but it may be the wrong emotion. You don't wake up that morning saying, "Hey, I want to grab my, the money out the purse. I don't want to chase my girl. I don't want." You don't wake up thinking that. But once the moment happens, Judge, you kind of go with the moment. Not saying it's wrong or right. But I do want to bring up a point the brother counsel said earlier. He had a, a case, um, Mr. Vincent, you said he 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 played down from FA. What did you say he played down to? I could I couldn't remember. It was yeah, he ended up pleading down from a felonious assault in R and O. He ended up getting the uh the fleeing and eluding on the nose, and he ended up getting either two or three years of probation. All right, so it's called plea down, judge. It's called plea down from the home invasion, from the carjacking, from the unarmed robbery. And play into the DV. It's called plea down. That's what happens sometimes. It ends up, it's gonna end up getting probation. So it's a relationship, Judge. He knows this woman. This is not a random person he walks up to and takes their car. It's not a random house he just breaks in and tries to get stuff. It's his girlfriend. The emotions got out of hand. Like I said, like Brother Council said, it's a plea down. Plead down from FA to RNO, down to Flynn, plea down from home invasion, carjacking dismissed, unarmed robbery dismissed to DV. That's unfortunate. I got and I got this part. That would be the best case scenario for your, case scenario. your for your for your client. But what what the court is is a little concerned about is mm -hmm. is you know it's you did use the word I was going to use uh, emotions. You got to learn how to handle some situations without uh, the physicality, the 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 impulse. You know, got to have a little bit of impulse control. You don't. We don't have a license. You can't get mad and jump in the car. You can't. You can't even whether it is your car. Whether whether they whether he co-signed for that vehicle, you know, whether he pays the insurance, 
till you get to till you get the Secretary of State stuff cleared up, you're not supposed to try. But with yeah, all that yeah. being said, bond is currently a hundred thousand dollars. The bond is an unaffordable bond. Bond uh the court uh, has to make a determination of whether Mr. Gaston is a flight risk or a danger to the community and, and needs cash bond. In, in this case, cash bond is warranted. Uh, the court is going to reduce the cash bond from 100,000 uh, to 10,000, 10% uh, with a GPS tether, a no contact. What are his hours of work? He works from, I'm sorry, what are your hours of work? Here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What are your hours of work? I work 9 p.m. to 6.15 a.m. 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Okay, so his curfew, his curfew will be from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. All right, that's it. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Good morning, Attorney Burton. And Deputy, if we have Blake Westbrook available. All right, that's the first guy. That's the first guy. And I, yeah, I, I highlighted that last comment that I did. Yeah, these are all allegations. We don't know what happened. Just the first appearance and a bond redetermination here, and it's all I'm playing. I'm not saying this guy's guilty. All I'm saying is he's charged with some pretty bad things, and the next guy's even worse. Well, sorry, what the next guy is charged with is even worse. The next guy, yeah, there's a re there's a reason why I put it second. Another thing, Deborah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not sick, Deborah. I uh, every year when the weather goes from hot to cold or cold to hot, I get a pretty bad case of hay fever. Is what I call it. Allergies, hay fever. I just get a bad head cold. Throat gets scratchy. Very low energy. So it's not like I'm you know have the flu or anything. But so I just you know just feeling a little down, which is what everyone's talking about. Also, I've got some great news. Great news. And I'm going to do this for one second. One second. Hold on. I found it. I found my hoodie. He didn't steal it. I got it. I had to go looking for it real quick because I, I actually was worried I didn't have it. All right, now let's go to the next clip. Yeah, that that's my sick face. Yeah, you saw it. You saw it. All right, let's go. Stand on the black line, stay four nine. Straight four nine. Rodney Pearson, four nine. Rodney Frank Pearson the third. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. This magistrate or judge may I hear in a criminal matter. Case numbers two three zero five nine five two zero zero one. Sir, you have an attorney. Go ahead, counsel. Your Honor, Austin Gregory, PA five one nine three, on behalf of Mr. Pearson, was present by Zoom, has been made aware of his constitutional rights. Waste more reading and stands me. Thank you. I'm going to enter plea of not guilty. Court dates are. October 31st, 2023, it's probable cause conference, followed by preliminary examination, November 7th, 2023. Both matters are in front of Judge King. Mr. Pearson, you have some bond conditions, sir. One is you're not to have contact with Nakia Turner Parks. When I say no contact with her, that means no person to person contact, no contact with third parties, no phone calls, no emails, no text messaging. Do you understand that, sir? Yes. Also, sir, you're not to possess any firearms or any other dangerous weapons. You understand that, sir? You're not to possess any weapons or any other dangerous weapons. You understand that? Yes. Sir, you're not to go to the location of 16841 Tracy Street, City, Detroit. You understand that? Yes, that's my home. Well, while here. this case is pending, you're not supposed to go there, sir. You're not allowed to go there. Do you understand that? Sure. Yes. Uh, counsel, he's going to get a police escort, one-time opportunity to get belongings. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Also, uh, Mr. Pearson, let's see what else. Um, no assault or combative behavior on your part while this case is pending. 
Do you understand that term? <laughs> Do you understand that, Mr. Pearson, as to the last bond condition? You said, you, you said no, no assault, uh, what? No assault behavior. Oh, okay. Yes, I understand. Okay. All right, Council Vincent, I don't have a campus history or criminal history. Okay, he has local ties or hopefully alternative ties. Uh, charges are assaulted. Go ahead, Esteban, please. You're absolutely correct, Judge. And because he doesn't have any priors, I'm only going to be asking for $75,000 cash to surety with Tether House arrest. Um, Your Honor, I'm sure, as, as you saw, as well as defense counsel, because this defendant allegedly couldn't get oral sex from the complainant, he ends up starting to beat her. Um, and when I say Peter, very assaultive in the sense that he ends up slamming her head, Judge, uh, multiple times, allegedly, fire place. Punch, punches her in the face, and then strangles her. Yeah, 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 on top of the fact that they were visible to police officers, but she had to go to Sinai Grace Hospital, where she was ultimately diagnosed with a concussion a fractured nose, contusions to the head and face, a severe hematoma on the left side of her face, which is consistent with the assaultive behavior that the defendant performed because she wouldn't capitulate to his request for oral sex. So with all that being said, Judge, um, if there were more priors, I'd be asking for more, but just based on the assaultive nature, we do feel as though this defendant is a danger at the very least to the complainant and respectfully judge we're asking for that cash with tether house arrest what was the amount Seventy-five thousand cash assurity judge okay council gregory go ahead your honor uh first the previous conviction is non-assaultive he is employed he he is 31 years old he's lived in michigan his entire life and uh he understands the no contact order he's willing to uh, he understands that he will not be able to return to his home um and observe the no contact order with the one-time police escort but he does ask for a personal bond in order to best assist in his defense he does does maintain his innocence throughout this so we are asking for a personal bond here thank you I've heard all the representations in this matter. What I find is that while this happens on October 20th, 2023, uh, just a few days ago, the allegations are is that he assaults the complainant, then he leaves the, the location, then he comes back and assaults her again, where she sustained a number of injuries. She had to go to the hospital. I do believe that Mr. Pearson is a danger. Uh, in this matter, and with the injury sustained, I'm surprised that the prosecutor only asked for $75,000, I believe, was it cash assurity or cash? No, it was cash assurity with the monitorization. And Your Honor, it's just for the fact that I couldn't find anything else regarding prior assaultive uh, convictions. If I would have, I probably would have doubled that number. Well. I'm going to go with what the prosecutor, $75,000 cash surety, is going to be the GPS tether, house arrest, if he makes bond, along with the other bond conditions. I believe it's going to be unaffordable, correct, counsel? Gregory? That's correct, Your Honor. That means he's going to get another court date, which will be Tuesday, October 24, 2023, 9 o'clock, in front of Judge McConnell, who's going to look at the bond amount and bond conditions. Anything else, councils? No, thank you, Judge. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. you step aside. Step back in the booth and have a seat, man. All right. Again, we fast forward a couple days to the bond redetermination with Judge McConico. Anyways, yeah, I see everyone talking about Judge Simpson. I don't know what happened. A lot of you guys know better than I do. I wasn't there. I was watching another court, grabbing another clip when it went down. So I don't know. I've just heard rumors, but some of the Judge Simpson, Judge 
Simpson and Judge Santos chats mainly. You get a lot of trolls in there. You get a lot of people just talking nonsense. Most people are um, respectful and don't do a lot of dumb things. Don't say a lot of dumb things. And I don't. I never really thought that they read or anyone in the court actually read the chats, but some people do, and it may have gotten just too much. Maybe that's what it is. I, I don't know. Um, Judge Simpson's been around for a long time, though. I don't think it had anything to do with chat, to be honest. I think it probably had to do with, you know, he was just tired of, I don't, you know what? I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop because I wasn't there. I don't, I don't know. I wasn't there. So I'm going to stop trying to give my two cents on something I know nothing about. All right. Judge McConico, we're going to finish this video off. Just probably about 10 minutes left. I am signing out. I'll still be in chat. At, uh, I'm not going to pause it anymore. This is about the, all the energy I have left. So if you haven't already, like and subscribe. Jump kick backflip. If you would like to donate, I would very much appreciate it. Links down in the description. is floated in the chat if anyone sees it or if anyone wants to put it up there. No pressure, though. All right. Let's finish the video out. Till next time. Bye. Five nine five two zero zero one. People of the state of Michigan versus Rodney Frank Pearson the third. Been discharged with count one assault with intent to do great bodily harm, less than murder, or violation. Also count two. Count three. Police officer assaulting, resisting, obstructing. Count four. Domestic violence. Today is the day time for a bond redetermination hearing. Judge, good afternoon. Good to see you, Steve Vincent, for the people. Seven one nine one seven. Yes. And Counsel. good morning, Your Honor. May I please honorable court Vassal Johnson II, 72130 on behalf of Mr. Pearson. Uh, I'm present on Zoom and he's also present on Zoom, Your Honor. Pearson, state your name for the record. Rodney Frank Pearson III. Argument. Huh? Argument, Mr. Johnson. May yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Pearson is 31 years old. He's 31 years old, Your Honor. Um, I ran his eye chat. I was just retained last night by his family, his mother, his sister. Um, he, I ran his eye chat. There, th this is the only matter on this eye chat. However, I did some further digging. I know that he has a a prior misdemeanor from five years ago. Uh, it's, it's a 2018 case. He an expungement on that matter. Um, he actually lives. I pulled up the ROA here for this matter. He lives at the 16841 Tracy address. Uh, bond is currently set at 75,000 uh, cash or surety. Um, he's working full time at, at Chrysler. Uh, he's a, for 10 years. Uh, he works about 50 hours a week. Um, and uh, that Tracy address judge is his mother's home. I had a long conversations with his mother about an hour yesterday, uh, last night. Um, family home, she owns it. Um, he, he resides there. He would love to return there as well, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. um, strong family support. Uh, he has, there's a number of family members that I I know for some years uh, on behalf of Mr. Pearson uh, that are in Detroit um, area. Judge, I would just respect, he was stabbed twice uh, from this ordeal, taken to some hospital. Um, he really doesn't want to lose his job, Judge. I would just ask respectfully. He's presumed innocent, presumed innocent unless proven guilty. I would just ask, Your Honor, if Mr. Pearson can have a bond reduction in the amount of 50000 personal. He's going to attend all court dates. I have no problem, um, no issue with that. I know he's going to attend with me. All right. Mr. Prosecutor. Uh, judge, I do, and respectfully, I do appreciate defense counsel's argument. I would just like to get into the allegations a little bit, seeing as though defense counsel did touch on them. Don't, don't care about the bribes. It's this particular incident that's very alarming. Now, it's ironic, defense counsel ended up mentioning a stabbing. Well, that's what precipitated this whole thing. Allegedly, defendant had an ex-girlfriend who ended up coming to the residence. They get into a beef earlier in the day. Allegedly, the ex-girlfriend ends up stabbing the defendant. So then, subsequent to that, the complainant ends up calling the police. Apparently, the defendant didn't want the police to get involved. He leaves. And then speeding things up later in the day, he comes back to the residence. Put your hand he's down, sir. Put your hand down. Continue. 
he isn't too happy with the fact that the complaint allegedly got a hold of the police to intervene on that matter. And judge, it was just a police report. The police didn't come out. But to try to smooth things over, allegedly, to try to make things right, the defendant ends up asking the complainant to give him oral sex. Well, at that time, judge, the complainant wasn't in to give an oral sex to the defendant. And the defendant went a different way here because she denied him that request. He allegedly starts beating. And when I say beating her, allegedly, he ends up taking her head and slamming it into a brick wall multiple times. And then on top of that, he punches her. And then on top of that, he attempts to strangle her. And how do we know this? Because when the police came, she was bleeding from her head. She had scratches around her neck. She had physical injuries. And she ultimately ended up having to go to the hospital. So, Judge, I, I don't know if the defendant was fully aware of all of the allegations. Respectfully, I wanted Your Honor to know at least on paper what we have. Um, defense counsel may have a different story, but through the present, that's what we have, Judge. And I believe this was a $75,000 cash assurity bond. I do believe the defendant is a danger to the complainant um, over oral sex. I mean, that's what this boils down to. Um, so with that being said, Judge, we would ask for the bond to continue. Judge, can I respond briefly? Oh. I know brother counsel, he stated, he stated allegedly a lot. I don't have the discovery in the matter. I know that he's making his rendition from his alleged set of facts. Uh, judge, like I stated, Mr. Pearson's presumed innocent at this point. Uh, he's not a, a danger in the, in the community. A no contact order would suffice here, your honor. Um, again, I would just ask for the uh, personal bond reduction or a um, an amount that Mr. Pearson can uh, uh, post if not a personal bond in the amount of whatever amount your honor wants to wants to order. Uh, court haven't heard the arguments of counsel. Court finds that the $75,000 cash bond is an unaffordable bond. In order to have an unaffordable bond, the court must believe that the defendant is either flight risk or the defendant uh, poses a danger to the community or a danger to um, the complaining witness. Based on the alleged facts in this in this um, in this incident, uh, court uh, looks like the defendant would be uh, posed a threat not to the not to the greater community, but to the complaining witness. If uh, it uh, looks like just from the allegations that the defendant seems to be a little bit upset about the about a little police interaction, um, was you know from the investigator again hearsay document more allegations. Um, the request for the oral sex was turned down, and it turned into a savage beating allegedly. Uh, with those facts, um, alleged facts, the court finds that a cash bond is appropriate. The court is going to reduce the bond, but the bond will be reduced to 75,010% with a GPS tether, a 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew, uh, and no contact provision with the complaining witness. And Jeff, can, he, can he go back to his home, his Tracy home? Yes, absolutely. That's where, I mean, right. that's where he needs to be tethered to. Yes. Thank, thank you very much. You're welcome. If, uh, I know. I think I might know what he might say. He has a, like I said, he's working at Chrysler. I do not know his hours. Yeah, what, what are your, and that's fair. What are your hours, sir? I, I need to unmute. Let me see if I can okay, hold, hold on one second. You're, you're muted. All right. uh, Chrysler, 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 Chrysler. And Judge, if I may, while the defendant no, gets. No, hold on, no, hold on one second, Mr. Prosecutor. Oh, sorry, sorry. Is there a deputy near you, uh, Mr. Pearson? He can unmute your unmute the device. Yes, um, Your Honor, I work I work the night through from four p.m. to two a.m. Okay, hold on. You work Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday, one, 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 most days. One second. You work from four p.m. to two a.m. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, we're going to change the curfew to 3 a.m. to 3 p.m. I'm sorry, Your Honor, please. 3 a.m. curfew to 3 p.m. Okay, sir. All right. Sorry. Prosecutor? 
Uh, thank you, Judge. Just just uh, really quickly, in the investigator's report, and I do appreciate defense counsel mentioning the, the Tracy address, I'm sure Your Honor can see, at least my rendition of it is that they both resided at the Tracy address. Um, and I know that Your Honor ended up putting a no contact clause. So um, is Your Honor just comfortable having him go back to that address with the no contact? I thought that was his mother's house. I mean, so wait. Well, well, okay, okay, I just okay, okay. Well, Mr. Well, Mr. Johnson does the does the girlfriend live at the house too? No. It, it, it just says it on the investigator's report, and that's what I'm going by. And I do appreciate defense counsel as an officer of the court. I just wanted to mention that, Judge. Okay. Well, uh, there's no contact. Uh, if the uh, if the complaining witness lives at the Tracy house with the mother, also he can't go there. Yeah. So, so that's going to be something that you guys there's, there's no contact provision so problem thank you. Okay. all right thank you thank you good seeing you awesome next case please all right all right all right oh that's all i got i know i said i wasn't going to pause it um someone answer me a question though before i sign off Seventy five thousand dollar bond no ten percent was issued over the weekend. Meconico changed it to a seven seventy-five thousand ten percent cash bond. It's not or surety. That means it still has to be paid seventy-five hundred in cash, right? Can he still go through a bonding company if they put up seventy-five hundred? Like, how does that exactly work? Is that is that how that works? I don't know. I've never been in a position where I need to bond it out of jail, so I don't know how that works. But I. I feel like they always say or surety when it, they can go through a bonding company. I don't know. I don't know. Um, let me know in the comments the answer to that question. Um, but yeah, everyone have a good night. I am taking my sick ass to bed. Hopefully I'll have a video for you before like 5 p.m. tomorrow. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.